Hey folks, I had two extremely fun games in the last 24 hours and wanted to put together a quick video to show you guys just how rigged Farragut is. For the weekly Havoc missions we're doing right now for Limit Breaker, for Citadel hits, floods, and ship kills. I'm not personally a destroyer main and sometimes I forget how good these ships are, especially the mid-tier DDs at knocking out some of the all-around tasks with regard to completing missions in Weekly Havoc, especially the shakedown missions where you're focusing on specific objectives. So of course we load into our first game after the tip and promptly knock out a Kraken and a High Caliber. And then I ran one more game this morning in the ship, just a quick follow up, and we nailed another high caliber with an insane amount of damage and progress towards our shakedown trials in just six minutes of work. So we are going to jump straight in and let the action in that match speak for itself. As we're loading in, just in case you're interested, Halsey is our skipper, and we are running boost to torpedo speed, concealment, main battery reload, smoke, and using the legendary unstoppable skill. So in our first key decision, I've seen a lot of games recently in which both DDs are spawning near a cap and they're both going to the same cap which really doesn't help your team with regard to either controlling multiple caps or getting a wider range of spotting taken care of. So I decide to bail out and go off to my own cap, which in this case is B instead. So as we're heading off to B, we see a couple battleships off in the distance, and then we notice that the cap itself is starting to change color. So we most likely have a destroyer that is taking that cap, and we do get spotted as soon as we come around the corner of the island. But luckily for us, the Mutsuki in the cap is, first of all, too far in, so we're able to counter spot him, and he's sitting broadside to us, which frankly makes it easy aiming and gives us the bigger surface area that we want to land more hits with our HE rounds. So given this good fortune that we know we should be able to outgun an IJNDD full stop, we decide to go in and cap and kill. So one kill down and a first blood, we make another key decision and it's to go dark and set up for an ambush on the battleships that are approaching the cap. So we quickly stop firing to break detection, otherwise known as going dark, and we see that the nearest battleship is seven clicks north of us and is firing at another ship. So we're hoping that he's not paying a ton of attention to us and we are able to break detection and then jump behind the rock between us and the edge of the cap. So as we take that cover, we start to set up to spring our trap. We're already facing in a direction where we can fire our torps. We make a little bit of adjustment and the good news for us is is that the New York keeps staying spotted so we are in a perfect spot to set up an ambush. Now the battleship seems to keep traveling at the same course and speed even though he just saw a destroyer skirmish right in front of him and his team lost. But his distraction is our gain and we're able to use the island just with a touch of acceleration to basically stay unspotted so we don't have to use our smoke yet. With a little more angling we're able to get our torpedoes off successfully. And we wind up with five torpedo hits and it looks like a flood as well that he repairs. So we can smoke up at this point and basically use our smoke screen to go to guns. If we just get one fire or do enough damage with our HE rounds, we'll be able to kill him off before he can repair his damage. So we nab our second kill with our guns and our good fortune is that the second New York is seeming to come right into our position as well, even though again, two ships have vanished there like the Bermuda Triangle in the last couple minutes. So effectively, we just rinse and repeat. 
The second New York should be really, really wary of approaching this position by now, but he continues forward. So we align ourselves to get torpedoes off across his bow and scoot forward right at the last second so we don't get spotted. We successfully land another batch of torps, grab another flood, and a devastating strike for our third kill of the match. So at this point, I am completely ecstatic with my damage total, my kills and floods, which help with my weekly havoc totals, but the work isn't done. It's like a Ginsu steak knife commercial, but wait, there's more. What could be more perfect than the arrival, again, right into our position, of a squishy cruiser, this time Akuma. We let him creep in, we let him get broadside to us, and we are able to pummel him with 10 Citadel hits in a mere 15 seconds. So at this point, I'm just feeling extremely stoked and thankful that Captain Arcana and Five Jumps Too Late gave me this great advice on Farragut. However, I'm also feeling pretty stupid for not having taken this ship out into my weekly Havoc trials sooner, as my two game stat tally is literally 12 out of 12 citadels recorded, 8 of my 10 kills, and 4 out of 15 floods in just two games. And again, what's really awesome is not just that we got so much done in just two games, it was really versatile. We were able to work on three separate categories with one ship, which is really great during the shakedown phase of Weekly Havoc when you can work on your various trials concurrently. The only bummer in the whole deal was that our first game, Kraken, did not count for our hard mode goal because we weren't in a tier 5 or higher ship, but our high caliber did count and helped us get 50 extra renown taken care of. So Farragut, technically not broken, but OP, I would say yes, and a great ship to accomplish your weekly Havoc missions. Well, that's it for this short but sweet review of a really fun match. And while you're still here, why not take a minute to check out our review of the latest patch that is linked up above. I hope you get all of your campaign missions done with time to spare. This is Van Kraken, and I am out.